Hi, I'm Bailey Colley, and today I will be talking about trauma-informed teachers. In order to become a trauma-informed teacher, you must first have a shift in mindset and start viewing student behaviors through a trauma-informed lens. Trauma-informed teachers understand the impact that stress and trauma have on the brain and a student's ability to regulate their emotions, behaviors, and learn. They realize the correlation between trauma and low academic achievement and behavioral problems. We need to see behaviors as unmet needs and regulation issues, not as defiance. These students are in their limbic systems or brain stems, not in their neocortex and prefrontal lobes, which is where they need to be for regulation and learning to take place. We need to meet these students where they are and get on their level. You should assume all students have experienced trauma because most of them have. A 2015 study found that over 60% of students have experienced trauma and one third have two or more adverse childhood experiences or ACEs. It was discovered in 2019 that students with four or more ACEs are 50 times more likely to have academic or behavioral problems. You may not realize it, but sitting in your classroom each year, there will be a student experiencing trauma. Kids have stress too. As teachers, we need to be responding, not reacting to behaviors. These behaviors are a call for help or a way to cope with stress. We need to look into these misbehaviors and find the deeper need that has not been met. They are not purposefully being defiant. These behaviors have served as a way of coping and have in some way worked for them. Stay calm and do not take it personally. These students need you and positive student-adult relationships. Remember, it's not what's wrong with them, it's what happened to them. Your classroom needs to feel safe and comfortable. If a child feels safe and felt, they will learn, but they will not learn from you if they don't like you. Our relationships with these students are critical. We need to have a focus on building relationships because that is a major protective factor against the impacts of trauma and adversity. Your classroom should be predictable and have routines. Their lives are filled with uncertainty. They need to be able to count on your classroom to be a place of consistency. Two big things you can do on your classroom are noticing things, such as a new haircut or a cool pair of shoes, and validating their feelings and emotions. Being a young person can be tough. The biggest thing you can do, though, is be there. Just you physically being present in the classroom goes a long way. A trauma-informed teacher is able to stay regulated and be aware of their own brain state. We need to be constantly self-monitoring ourselves to be sure we are in our prefrontal lobes and are being objective. A calm teacher presence has a calming effect on students. But let's be real. Being a teacher is stressful, and no matter how we're feeling on the inside, we must still act appropriately for school. One way to do this is to employ deep breathing techniques to return to a regulated state. Emotions are contagious and we need to keep ours in check by staying regulated and being a co-regulator to our students. My favorite deep breathing technique that I use when I'm teaching in the classroom is starfish breathing. Place your non-dominant hand in front of you and hold out your dominant pointer finger. Slowly begin tracing your fingers. When you are stroking up, you breathe in. When you trace downwards, you breathe out. You do this for each finger. Another technique is box breathing. You can either draw a box in the air with your finger or imagine it. Breathe in for four seconds, hold for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, hold for four seconds, and repeat as many times as you need. These techniques really work and can be done quickly in the classroom to regulate yourself and bring you back up to your prefrontal cortex, your thinking brain. Trauma-informed teachers understand the impact of trauma. They are aware of their brain state and stay regulated, and they also do something else that's very important. They practice self-care. Self-care is crucial in this line of work because you can't pour from an empty glass. You need to take care of yourself if you want to take care of anyone else. Self-care helps teachers avoid burnout and is the antidote for compassion fatigue and secondary trauma. Before I end today's video, I wanted to leave you with a few ending remarks. Every child needs a positive student-adult relationship. You can be that adult. Though we can't change their pasts, we can change their futures. You can make an impact. You can make a difference. This is Bailey Colley. Thanks for watching.